I hate gift giving and receiving. Receiving gifts is so weird. What do you say? Thank you. This is Coffee Convos with Kale Lowry and Lindsay Chrisley. I really want you to be in your feels, Kale. That does not interest me whatsoever. I feel very attacked by you. A spirited discussion about motherhood, friendship, family, and life in the public eye. I'm just not with the fakery anymore. There's a fakery bakery around here. <laughs> Here's Kale and Lindsay. This episode of Coffee Combos podcast is brought to you by Lomi by Pila. Visit L-O-M-I dot com slash coffee combos. Hello, kitty gang. Happy Thanksgiving. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, we are here for a holiday episode. Good morning. That is my holiday singing. <laughs> um, hello and happy Thanksgiving, fluffers. I am so excited. It's one of my favorite holidays. Actually, the holidays just in general are my favorite holidays, but I love to eat. I love Thanksgiving food. Love everything about it. Um, I do love Thanksgiving food. That's like – I could eat Thanksgiving food all year long. Wait. Someone told me not too long ago – it was a guy. He told me that he doesn't get down with Thanksgiving food and this was just like a random conversation. Actually, it was a conversation I was having with the nail salon and I was just like, what – what happened to you? <laughs> who hurt you? <laughs> like who who traumatized you in your life that like you don't love Thanksgiving food? I've just – that's I think literally the first person that I've ever met that's ever told me that. Kristen doesn't eat like turkey and stuff. She only eats the sides. Wait, what? Yeah. She she calls it – she calls it sides giving. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I could kind of get behind that although I do – I, I love a fried turkey. Like I'm from the I've South. never had fried turkey. Huh? I've never had fried turkey. Oh my God. It will make you slap your mama, your grandmama. Like it is so good. Chase Chrisley makes the best fried turkey ever. I was sneaking into their refrigerator last year um, at midnight getting pulls off of his fried turkey. So good. This fried turkey. Honey. I've never had it. Um, one of my best friends is coming from Dallas. You guys know Sterling um, and her kids are coming. And Sterling, she puts her foot in whatever she cooks. So I'm really excited for her to cook. She cooked um, – we did Thanksgiving at her house two years ago. Um, and I'm just not a chef. I'm not a cooker. I'm not a – I just can't. So I'll take care of the drinks and Sterling can cook the food. Wait, do you guys drink like excessively on Thanksgiving? I don't drink ever. Alcohol drinks? Are you talking about you're going to handle soft drinks? Oh, I'm handling soft drinks. No. I'm not opposed. If people wanted to drink alcohol at my house for Thanksgiving, I would not be upset. Um, That's their (laughs) their prerogative. But um, with four kids, I never want to have a hangover. So that's not happening for me. Um, No, I think, first of all, need to back up. My parents don't drink, never have. Um, actually was having this conversation with my dad the other day and he was like, I don't know what happened to my kids. Like they all drink and we never did. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, it would be so nice to just like take the edge off of being around everyone by just having champagne. Like I don't get it. Like why can't we do that? But never alcohol allowed in my parents' house ever. So we do not have alcohol um, at my parents' house for any holiday ever. Oh, okay. Do we think that's weird? No, I I don't think that's weird. I don't think when I was growing up doing Thanksgiving, like with my extended family, my cousins, my aunts and uncles and stuff, I don't remember them ever even maybe there was – no, I feel like wine was only at Christmas. I don't remember them ever having – alcoholic beverages at Thanksgiving. I feel like there was wine at Christmas and that was it. Um, I would love to know how many people just get drunk with their family over holidays because I think that that's probably a pretty common thing. Did you ever go out for um, Thanksgiving Eve? The fuck is that? Oh, here what? people go out for Thanksgiving Eve. It's like a big thing. They like go to the bars and bar hop and stuff. Huh? Wait, back up. Back up. <laughs> First of all, where was this originated from? Is this like a common – White people probably. I don't know. Um, How, what? Thanksgiving <laughs> Eve. Thanksgiving Eve is like a big deal around here. People go out for Thanksgiving Eve. Ma'am, I've never heard of Thanksgiving Eve ever in my life. Thanksgiving Eve looks like your kitchen fucking exploded 
your mom's bitching you out because you need to clean all the pots and pans and start the dishwasher so that she can re-fuck it up. Yeah, no, here, that's not it. You just go, you get ready, you go out, you, and you, you get fucked up with your friends. So that's, that's interesting. I'm actually going to look up Thanksgiving Eve and anybody who has ever participated in Thanksgiving Eve, please let me know and give me a better definition than what Kale has because (laughs) going out and getting fucked up with your friends seems, seems strange, but like, okay, I could get behind it. Yeah. Wait, before we get into like talking about anything else, let me tell you what happened to me this morning. Okay. So I was just laying in my bed, like being trying to be a normal person, which we all know that I'm not. And I start hearing, okay, and I need to know if anybody else has ever done this because this has happened to me like all the time where you will be sleeping and you think you hear something or you know that you hear something, but you're still kind of like asleep. But like yeah, you like, know what's like going al- on that's around like you. Luc- yeah, like almost like a lucid dream, but you're not really sure. Like you think you might be more awake than – Yes. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what was going on. So I'm like – I hear like this throw-up noise and I'm like still sleeping with my eyes closed. I don't know why I didn't feel like I needed to peel them open sooner. I wake up. This dog is laid out beside me freaking puking on the bed. I knew you were going to say that. I fucking knew you were going to say that. Why? Like what What possessed her on that time that she needed to throw up and like what? Like I've never had a dog puke in my bed before and I was absolutely disgusted. But I'm going to tell you something more disgusting that I did. What did you do? You just laid down? I went and got a towel and I put it over the throw up. Yep. Because it was on like one side of the bed where no one was. And then I just went back to sleep. It was like too mm-hmm. early to try to start cleaning that up. Yeah. No, that's that's what I did. That's what I do when – If my kids are sleeping with me and they piss the bed, I'm not cleaning it up at two in the morning anymore. Stop. There was a there was a period of time in my life when I would clean it up in the middle of the night, but like for what? Okay, wait, wait, wait. If your kids piss the bed, is it not like a lot? No, not really. It's mainly just Lux. I mean, he knock on wood, he hasn't he hasn't in a really long time. But if he did, um, no, it would be less than like a towel. Okay, well. I don't think Jackson has peed the bed in like a very, very long time, like years. I think he only had like a couple bed peeing accidents, but I should you not. That is like one of the worst things as a mom to have to deal with, like a throw up kid in the middle of the night, a throw up dog in the middle of the night, um, or a bed wedding incident because you're literally half asleep when you're trying to deal with it. And you're like, the bathroom was like literally right there. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know why I thought that like the dog could have possibly like made it to her own crate to puke. I came up with a bunch of things in my head that like could have been a logical thing. But then I was like, wait, she's not a human. So there's that. And I also need to know from you and everyone else if it takes you literally all day to wash your bed linens because I have so much shit on my bed. That's so funny because – you were slightly late to the recording today. And I told Kristen, I was like, if she doesn't get on by 1030, I have to go wash my bed sheets. <laughs> I was like, I got shit to do. Washing my bed. Like I have someone who does my laundry regularly, but my sheets and my towels, I don't mind doing them on my own. Like it just doesn't bother me. And I, I love the smell of bleach. So I like do it a certain way. Um, I literally was like, I cannot wait to wash my bed sheets. Like I'm so excited. It does take all day. Um, But I I have like multiple sets, so it's like fine. So walk us through what's on your bed. I have four like regular, like the king size pillows, Mm -hmm. the ones that you sleep with. And then I have five decorative pillows, which come off. I don't don't always like wash the covers because those come off every night. And then I have – now that I have experienced – I got a brand new mattress when I moved into this house and Lux threw up on it twice – um, before I got a mattress protector. Um, so I have a mattress protector that I wash and then I have, I put my, f- my flat sheet under my fitted sheet. So I wash my mattress protector, my fitted sheet, my flat sheet, and I wash my comforter. So Kristen told me, which I wanted to throw the fuck up. Um, most like hotels and stuff, they don't wash or dry clean the actual comforter. No, I wash they don't. mine. Mine. I don't know if it's just like 
because people, it's a pain in the ass or because I have to put it on an extra spin cycle. So it rinses, like it drains. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm still going to do that because I want it to be clean. Um, And then I don't care how long it takes to dry. Like it doesn't bother me. Um, And so I wash everything at the same time. There's never a time where I don't wash the comforter too. Okay. So I wonder if our, you've seen my bed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sent you the last time I washed my sheets, which was literally last week. I sent you. Oh, you said yeah, but I didn't see the comforter. It was just like the sheets and the pillows. Yeah, so I don't put like a big comforter on my bed. Um, I get so hot at night, so I am a white sheet girl. We've talked about this so many times, but white sheet girl. Um, I have my Laura Ashley, which if you guys like don't have a a Laura Ashley pillow, you're not doing things right. Um, I've never heard of this. That would be a definite like lovely gift to get someone that would truly be the gift that kept giving every single night. I got my Laura Ashley a body size one whenever I was pregnant and have never been able to get rid of it. Used to be something that I just like snuggled with on the couch when I was married um, after I had Jackson because Will is a psychopath about pillows. So we had to have like the down super fluffy pillows that you you like sink into. Um, I don't really love a pillow like that though. And it's funny because since I got divorced, I got a whole different kind of feeling of pillow than I had whenever I was married because the ones we had when we were married were more ones like Will would have liked. Um, I have four, you know, like those pillows that have like the cooling technology in them? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I have four of those and then I have my um, body length Laura Ashley. Um, I put on white sheets and then I put on like a fuzzy, uh, kind of like, I don't know what type of material it is, but it's like a fuzzy, like blanket on top of my sheets. And then, you know, like the, um, slip cover that you put a duvet into. Yes. Okay. So I put that on top of my fuzzy, but I don't put a duvet in it because I get too hot at night. I hate duvet covers. I've never had a good experience with them. And then of course I have two barefoot dreams blankets on my bed because can't live without it. If you've ever had it, you'll never live without it. It's a major luxury. But I don't think I've ever had one. Mm, well, you just gave me Christmas ideas. Um, best thing ever, your kids will fight over them. We're blanket people. We love like throw blankets. My kids have like – we all have so many. I love them so much. Okay. I'm sending you a Barefoot Dreams blanket because you need to feel – you need to feel all the feels. Okay. I'm and down. you will never wake up again. <laughs> um, but that's that's what's on my bed, and it truly does. It's an all day process. I think it's funny that you use your like flat sheet underneath your fitted. I think that's so interesting. Um, also, major tip: when I moved into this house and I ordered mattresses for this bed, um, Jackson's bed and my guest bedroom. For the reason that you said about the accidents like on the mattress before you were able to get like protectors, um, I ordered those when I ordered the mattress. So there was no excuse for them not to be protected. And I'm so glad that I did because literally if this dog would have thrown up and the stain would have gone on it, I think I would have had to rid myself of the mattress. Like I can't, I can't like mattresses with stains freak me out so bad hotels truly freak me out so bad. Um, if you have ever been to a hotel and like the um, sheet has like come up like whenever you're sleeping, Ugh. has that yes, ever happened? Ew. Yes, ew. And you wake up and you like see the exposed mattress and you're like, holy shit. Like, Yeah, I immediately want to throw up. I can't. I can't. My mattresses are zipped into like a um, water protective cover. So like you literally um, – zip the whole mattress into it. And then I have a protector, like a mattress pad on top of that. I'm very diligent. And when, yeah, if you really want to get into it, when I take the mattress pad off, I'm able to Clorox like my whole like little mattress protector down and it smells so good and it's so clean. So if you guys haven't done this and your mattress is still uh, salvageable, do it. (laughs) Do it. You know what else makes a perfect gift Everly well? Because it's the gift of health and just knowing how to take care of yourself, your body, taking your lab test results directly to your physician, um, being able to get vitamins, supplements, 
And that goes for anyone on your holiday list. So this year you can prioritize what matters most when you share the gift of help with Everly Well. Um, these are at-home lab tests like food sensitivity, women's health, men's health, or vitamins and supplements because love and health are all you need, really. If you guys have not heard of Everly Well, which I would find it hard to believe if you've listened to our show ever before, we talk about them all the time. Um, Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you with personalized results and accessible tools for long-term health. Super easy to use. And I think this would be a great gift because they have over 30 at-home lab tests and high-quality vitamins and supplements that you can find the perfect test for you or for your loved one. Everly Well um, will ship products straight to you or your loved one with everything needed in one package. And if you order an at-home lab test, the sample can simply be collected at home and then shipped back to a certified lab and a prepaid envelope that is included with the test. And digital physician-reviewed results are sent straight to your preferred device in just days. And if you order vitamins and supplements, you can start adding them to your daily routine right away. It's so simple. Over 1 million people have trusted Everly Well to support their health and wellness goals, including us. And now you can help you or your loved one do the same. The gift of health has never been so easy to share than it is this holiday. For listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash convos. That's everlywell.com slash convos for 20% off your next at-home lab test, everlywell.com slash convos. I am Lola Blanc. And I'm Megan Elizabeth. And we're the hosts of Trust Me, the podcast about cults, extreme belief, and the abuse of power. Now on Podcast One. We're real-life cult survivors. And we're here to tell you anyone can join a cult. If you've ever dived headfirst into a new self-help program, or believed wholeheartedly in a spiritual practice, or even just trusted someone with your life, guess what? You're just as susceptible as everyone else. No one is safe, especially not Megan. I'm the most susceptible. We want to debunk the myth that people who join cults are uneducated or naive or broken because anyone can be manipulated by a narcissist or feel good in a new group they've joined. And we should know we both have been. Join us every week as we explore the world of extreme belief, talk to survivors and experts, and share our own experiences with cults and the abuse of power. Don't be fooled. You might be next. Get new episodes of Trust Me every Wednesday on Podcast One, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere you get your podcasts. I have to prepare my guest room for my guests for Thanksgiving. I got, I went to the, I went to Family Dollar and you, that, that store's a fucking game changer. They have so many brand name stuff. I spent so much money. Yeah. I got brand name stuff at Family Dollar at, by right by my house. And um, Sterling's coming on Sunday, like this coming Sunday. So I got new pillows for the guest room, new comforter, everything, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bleach all the sheets and stuff and get the bathroom ready. I spent so much money at Dollar General or Family Dollar because they had such good stuff for the bathroom. I like stocked up on all kinds of shampoos, conditioners, lotions, razors, like everything, and they're all brand name. So I'm wait. I just wanted to touch on that. Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, and I get confused by them. And then Dollar General, they're all different. What's the family dollar one? I don't know. I never I had never been in it. There's one on my street. Like literally my kids can ride their bikes there and I anytime they want to like go get candy or something like I'll take them and I just send them in the store and then I wait in the car. I'd never gone in there. Well, <laughs> last week when I didn't have my kids and I needed to go grab something, I went in there and it was like a shit ton of stuff and I literally was like, "Oh my god, like you can get any fucking thing at Family Dollar." I got all the best stuff for my guest bathroom. But what what are you putting in the guest? What who what do you put in a guest bathroom? Um, I just didn't want her to have to like bring stuff to like bathe herself, bathe her girls. Um, you know, I got like hair products, um, shampoo, conditioner, razors. I got um, flossers, toothbrushes. I don't want to, I don't want her to have to bring all of that stuff. That's so nice when you go to someone's house. It kind of feels like an upscale hotel. hotel. Yeah. That's like going to Todd and Julie Chrisley's. Yeah. You don't have to worry about bringing any of that stuff. They have the best stuff because she shops at Costco. So one, everything's in bulk and it's just like large and they have everything that you could think of. Like when I tell you um, the little individual Neutrogena like makeup wipes, the flossing picks, the 
um, things you clean your ears out with, um, all like the, the good soaps, it's literally better than going to a hotel. Um, if you come to my house, you might get, uh, I have spare toothbrushes. Like I was diligent about buying that, but outside of that, you're probably just going to like shower with what's ever in my shower. And I wish that I was like my parents. And in fact, you've now inspired me. So when we hang up from here, I think I'm going to go to Target and just go through their little section of like, um, you know, that section that they have where it's like the travel section. Yes. Like yeah, they you have can all find the, like, so much great shit in there. Yeah. So I'm going to go, fantastic. I'm going to go there today and do that. Um, cause, cause you have really inspired me I actually have family coming in town. So that would be very great. And also while we're on this topic of buying shit while I'm there, I'm going to get a little, um, box to put together like some snacks and drinks and stuff for the delivery drivers because I get so many deliveries over the holidays. And I think that that's so cute. I see a lot of my like blogger girlfriends making that so cute outside their door for um, like UPS, FedEx, USPS, whatever, to be able to just like grab a snack and a drink. Isn't that yeah, so cute? Yeah, that's super cute. Yeah. I, I remember that from the holiday season last year. And I, I do think it's super cute, especially because it's a crazy time. And I actually watched a TikTok today. Um, an Amazon driver was like giving tips on how he was like, I'm going to help you help us help you. Um, <laughs> and he was saying that like the flex drivers and stuff that deliver for Amazon, it's not like USPS, like it's a different person every single time. And they literally can deliver in the middle of the night. So leave like your porch lights on and stuff like that. And so I think those are like the forgotten delivery drivers, like the flex ones, because they have typical like FedEx, Amazon, UPS from eight to eight, but then they also have flex drivers. I don't know if UPS, USPS or FedEx and UPS, I don't know if they have um, like out of regular hours deliveries, but Amazon does. So he was like, don't, you know, we're tripping over stuff. We don't mean to make your dog bark. We're not going to knock, but like, that would be nice for like those drivers that deliver in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, I was um, cleaning up my kitchen the other night and it was probably close to 830 because it was getting close to Jackson's bedtime and he had already made it upstairs and my doorbell rang and I kid you not, it was like rainy and it was cold outside and I was getting a um, UPS delivery that late. And I said, oh my gosh, it's so late. I wish I would have had a snack for her then because she just looked like she was so tired. And there's no telling how many packages I think about. I always think about this over the holiday. And I don't know why I think about it more over the holiday than the regular part of the year. Maybe I'm just like in the spirit. But now that you can order everything offline and because of Amazon, I feel like they probably have to work so much harder because there's so much more delivery. I agree. And I think the flex, I actually think the flex drivers are able to pick up more hours and stuff. Well, I had not I did not even know what a flex driver was. So you They drive just, their own cars. You just informed me um of of something. Actually you've informed me of a couple of things on this episode um that I was unaware of. Before we do the this or that, um, Thanksgiving foods, I've gotta tell you, I was preparing Jackson for a field trip. I talked to Kristen about this either on Southern Tea or somewhere I talked to her about it. Um, about this is the first field trip that I have not gone on as a chaperone. So I was preparing for it today and, um, preparing for like the lunch. And I don't know why I get so freaked out, but I'm, I was like so alarmed that like he was not going to have something. I went back and looked at the list that his teacher sent. I acted like he was going for like stay away camp for like a long time. I went through this list like six times and I was like, okay, he's got his beanie. He's got his gloves um, he's wearing the right shirt. So in case he gets lost, like my child will get lost. So make sure he's got on the right shirt. Um, I was making dino nuggets at like eight o'clock last night to put in his lunchbox. And, um, I was just like, so nervous. I don't know, like dropping him off at the school this morning, knowing that he was going to get on a bus and like, I wasn't going to be there stressed me out. I, anything with the kids at school stresses me out. No, but like, do you chaperone on field trips or? I like, have, I have chaperoned, but it's not something I do regularly. Kale, when I tell you, I've been on everything. So this is the first time ever. And when I went to drop Jackson off at school, we get in carpool this morning and he is like, mom, why is this the field trip you're not going on? 
And I'm like, well, because I had things to do. And like, I always, I am a mom that has always, you know, I will make sure if there's like a sign up genius and like the school needs something or like, you know, stuff for the school nurse, um, whatever. Like I've always been on top of that to like, just be a part, do my part, whatever. And I remember talking about last year that I was going to not sign up to be room mom because my mental health couldn't take that at that time. And I'm glad that I didn't do it this year. I just don't feel like I'm as cut out as maybe some other moms being a single mom and trying to work and like do stuff for Jackson and like have family stuff going on. Not to say other people don't have that kind of stuff going on, but I just don't feel like I'm cut out for it right now. And maybe like I'll be able to get back to being a Pinterest mom and like room mom. It's just not my thing. Um, but when I tell you I was so nervous for him to get out of the car, kill, like I was having anxiety sweats. And this was a holiday field trip? This was like they were um, – no, they're studying uh, bears or something. And so they're going to some type of like mountain preserve. And so – I remember doing that in school. Do you remember going through that um, No part in school, like where you studied bears? No. Oh, I specifically remember it, but I thought it was second grade for me, but maybe it was third. Um, and it was such a fun unit that we did. I, I so remember it with like, I remember going through talking about like the grizzly bears and like the black bears and brown bears and like loved it so much. So of course, anything that I loved, I want Jackson to also love. Um, and I think it would probably have been a fun field trip, but that's what they were doing. And of course, I'm just like panicking because I'm like, okay, he's got all the things that he needs, but like, what if he gets up there and he forgets his beanie and like forgets to know how to put up like his hood? Like, I don't know. I'm a psychopath. I don't know. Yeah. You're a little psychopathy. Yeah. Um, Is Jackson going to help you cook for Thanksgiving this year, ma'am? Um. I do have Jackson for Thanksgiving this year. I don't know what we're actually going to be doing for Thanksgiving. Um, My parents um, are expected to be in court a couple of days um, before. And so. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Right before Thanksgiving? Yeah. um, They wouldn't. The 21st. Not not that I feel like it should be like a law or anything, but like. Damn, they couldn't have waited until after Thanksgiving. Well, because the courts close um, federal government and stuff pretty much. Oh, that's right. They closed like probably Black Friday and probably that following Monday. Yeah. And then, you know, their hours are so weird through the holiday. So, um, yeah, I hate the fact that it's going to be just a couple of days before Thanksgiving. But truly, this is the first year that I have not had solid holiday plans, which makes me kind of feel all out of sorts. But here's my thought process. I'm like, okay, we're going to go and take care of what needs to be taken care of. It's still a few days before Thanksgiving. The grocery store won't run out of food. They might run out of some stuff. But if they do, it's okay because we don't have to have it. Um, We are healthy. Um, We have food all the time. So if they, you know, run out of nuts, it'll be okay. And um, I'm just going to go from there. So once we get through that process, then I will actually worry about Thanksgiving. I've never been in this position before um, in my life. I don't know if you guys remember, but last year I did a Thanksgiving um, little styled picnic with all of Jackson's like favorite things yes. because yes. we, that was my, was that my first holiday that I didn't have Jackson? I think yes. it, like my first like major one. And you gave him, and you um, introduced him to Georgia. Yes. And so that's probably like going to go down in history as one of like my favorite holiday, holiday. memories ever. Mm-hmm. And it was bittersweet because like Will was there as well. Um, and it was just super cute. So also I've thought of worst case scenario, I might just do another picnic of Jackson's favorite things for go Thanksgiving oh, food altogether. Hope that everybody else really enjoys their Thanksgiving. Maybe I will have a friend that I can dr- do a drive by and take a pull off of their fried turkey. <laughs> and keep it moving, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens, but I want to do the, this or that Thanksgiving foods because I, I have big opinions about Thanksgiving foods and I'm, I'm very invested. It's about that time for me to reactivate my stitch fixes for my boys because 
Stitch Fix is putting the joy back into getting dressed for the new season. Denim, sweaters, boots, all picked out for you and your kids, your husband, whoever, with an expert stylist. So you can be feeling great with clothes that fit right and they're your style. So you get online, you take a small quiz, and you can also check off things that you would wear, you wouldn't wear. So they kind of get an idea of what your style is to curate outfits for you. And, you know, how do celebrities look so good? They usually have a personal stylist who takes their preferences and the latest trends into consideration. And so with Stitch Fix, you get the celebrity treatment and personalized style results from real stylists who work with you to create the perfect wardrobe for you. I think this would be such a great gift to get someone um, because it is a gift that just keeps giving or you can just, like you said, um, you can, you know, pause or whatever and just send like a box or something. I absolutely love this so much because you truly like do this quiz and it knows you like literally it knows you, you know, exactly you're going to get things that you absolutely love. And I have never gotten a box for Jackson that he didn't love everything that was in it. Um, And he's a hard person to please whenever it comes to clothes. You can try the pieces at home before you buy it, which is something that I love. So you're just going to keep what you love and then send back the rest. Um, The shipping returns and exchanges are going to be free and um, there's no subscription required. So you can order a refresh as needed, which is what I was kind of talking about, or you can set it and forget it with regular seasonal fixes. So you're going to be in full control. Right now, Stitch Fix is offering our listeners $20 off their first fix at stitchfix.com slash combos. That's stitchfix.com slash combos for $20 off today, stitchfix.com slash combos. I'm also very invested. I, it's so funny because everyone, I don't know if it's just like my adulthood or Mac, mac and cheese has never been a staple at any of my Thanksgivings um, growing up ever. And so when I hear people talk about mac and cheese at their Thanksgivings, it's so funny. And like, I look forward to it now as an adult, now that I don't have like my traditional Thanksgiving that I grew up, you know, going to. Um, that's like one of my favorite things to eat at Thanksgiving. My mom and nanny make the best homemade macaroni and cheese ever. Like it's the kind that when you open up the oven, it's like, I'm going to set the scene. It's a cheese overload and the cheese gets just like a little browned and like bubbly on the top. And then you can see like all the butter like seeping up. Oh, so good. Honey, it is so good. For. It's not dry at all. Um, you could probably, if if it comes out properly, you could put it in a bowl because it's like so cheesy, so good. Um, however, if I was going to make macaroni and cheese because I can't cook like they can, I have a really good crock pot recipe, but you got to be careful with doing a crock pot macaroni and cheese because it can get dry if you're not watching it. It's not like one of those crock pot things that you put it in, you leave it, and then you come back eight hours later. It's like a you stir use it, the- watch it. Yes. Okay. It's one of those. Okay. Well, I need to try that because I know I've said it before on here, but I have definitely tried to make homemade mac and cheese and it comes out like soup. Like it's just like not good at all. So I definitely would – you're going to have to send me the crock pot one. I feel like for me, because I'm not that great of a cook, it's easier control to be able to do it in the crock pot because you can take it out whenever you want to. I mean, which I guess you could do that in the oven too, but for whatever reason, mine ends up being dry. So I just like don't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's so funny to me that that was not a staple because I feel – I don't know if it's like a Southern thing, but I've never been to a Thanksgiving that macaroni and cheese wasn't like a main dish. 100%. Uh, Yeah. Everyone in my adult life has always had mac and cheese at every, not even just Thanksgiving, but just like every, every dinner holiday, every, you know, celebration. That's like a huge thing. I'm, I'm mind blown. I'm always mind blown whenever you tell me that. Okay. So first one, stuffed turkey or turkey and stuffing separate. First of all, it's not stuffing if it's not stuffed in the turkey, it's dressing. So I know that Kristen probably wrote that. Um, but it is turkey and dressing if it's separate. I mean, I'm going to eat it either way. I don't care. I'm not. I love, I'm not eating a stuffed bird. I love 
stuffing or dressing. I love dressing. So we do cornbread dressing. Um, I'll if I get to have it, which I don't know if I'm gonna get to. I certainly hope I do because it's dressing is my favorite part of the meal. Like if I had to choose one thing, mm-hmm. actually, Same. if I could choose two things, I'm gonna you know, three things actually. Um, <laughs> dressing is one of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. Regular green beans, not green bean casserole. No, I love regular green beans. Like I love regular. Oh my god, it's so good. And the my folks, they make dressing so good that like you don't even need to slap gravy on it because it is so good. I so I love gravy on everything, but you're one of those that you go and fix your whole plate, and then you get the ladle and put gravy all over the entire confection. Yes, confection reminds me of. Matilda. Matilda. Entire yeah. Your <laughs> confection. See you at lunch. See you at lunch. Um, okay. No, oh, I'm, I, not, I'm not doing the stuffed turkey. I'm doing fried turkey and dressing separate. Okay. I'm doing – yeah, I'll go turkey and um, dressing separate as well. Okay. Are you a turkey or ham? <sighs> I love both. I don't I, – I can't choose. Like if – this year we – I don't know why – you know, Elijah was like, we're not going to do ham this year. And I was like, why? I don't even know what you normally have, but why not? I love ham. <laughs> okay. I love ham. So I think it's prob- probably common to have both at Thanksgiving for most people. Mm-hmm. Um, we always did – yeah, I think we always did both with Will's parents as well. Growing up, Julie um, – which mom, Julie, her granny – Always did a ham, always did a turkey, but I learned how to eat this sauce from them when I was a little girl. Um, I had never like known other people to do it. So like everybody's probably going to be like, that's customary, but I just thought it was like so special because her granny did it. But it was like this brown sugar and then you put mustard in the brown sugar to like make um, a sauce to put on the ham and it makes it kind of like sweet and salty. Okay. Like a glaze? So you put like brown sugar in a bowl and then you put mustard on top and then you like mix it. There's not like a – I couldn't give you guys a recipe because it's literally those two ingredients and you just have to mix it until it's like saucy. Okay. Okay. I'm tracking. You just spread that on your ham. And so I always ate ham as a little girl, but we didn't fry turkeys back in the day. So now that – we do a fried turkey. I don't think I've I've literally touched a ham on Thanksgiving in probably like five, six, seven, who knows, nine years. Like I haven't. I love fried turkey. Um, so good. Um, I've never had fried turkey. I think we're gonna fry one this year. Um, but I also want I requested a regular one too. Um, I'm gonna fight for the ham this year because I do love ham. Um, and I didn't did I do Thanksgiving last year? I don't think I did Thanksgiving at all last year now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but if I had to choose between the two, I would choose turkey just because it's the staple of Thanksgiving. Okay. Mashed potatoes or candied yams? 100% mashed potatoes. I don't like yams in any shape or form. We have neither. Um, we Which do sweet so potato weird. souffle. That is so weird to me. And sweet potato souffle is like literally – my second, like if I'm going in order, it's going to be dressing, sweet potato souffle, green beans. Um, I do love candied yams though. And if I was having to pick between these two, it would be candied yams over mashed potatoes. But we've never had mashed potatoes at our Thanksgiving or Christmas for that matter ever. That's so weird. I Mashed potato – actually, we always had both growing up, the mashed potatoes and the candied yams at my Nana's house. Um, we always had both and everyone would always be like, here, Kale, you're, you're Kaylin, you ready for your candy yams? And I'd be like, no, I don't like them. Um, oh my God. I love gravy or yams. juice. The what does that even juice? mean? Kristen? What the, what is juice? Oh, like, um, like gravy or like you, you pick some of the juice from like the turkey, right? Okay. No, I'm going to go gravy if I'm going either of them. Um, but I'm not putting gravy on any of my stuff. I'm going gravy and I'm putting gravy on every fucking thing. The next question is an offensive question. 
But I know (laughs) when I say that, people are going to come for me so hard because people who ride for box stuffing ride so hard for it. Um, I've never had box stuffing, always had homemade. Um, Anything to me homemade is going to be better than anything boxed. Don't argue with me. I can't choose based on preference because I've never had homemade dressing or stuffing. I I do really <laughs> I really do love box box stuffing. Like stovetop is a one and I actually made Elijah make it the other night. I didn't make him. I just put it all on the counter because he loves to cook and I was just kind of like nudging him to make it. I don't think he ever made box stuffing before. <laughs> and I was like I really want this for dinner. Um, so I'm going to go box stuffing just because that's all I've had. I think if Sterling makes homemade dressing this year, I will, I'll update you after Thanksgiving. Okay. Box stuffing is actually really good. I have had it, but never like at, oh my God. If someone showed up with box stuffing at one of our Thanksgivings, my grandmother would be appalled. Nanny would be like, the fuck is that? Um, Box stuffing is really good if you get like those smaller little muffin tins. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Muffin tins. Okay. Like the little ones. Uh-huh. And put them in there. It's really good like that. Okay. So they kind of look like muffins. Muffins. Yeah. Like uh, stuffing muffins. And oh, that's cute. Yeah. It is super cute and it's easy. It's controlled. Um, so that's an idea if anybody cares. Next question. I have become – a less bread person as I have gotten older than I was when I was a little girl. Um, Always big time bread girl. Now I don't really care for it and it might not be on there, but Jackson loves bread and we always do the rolls. Um, They come in the frozen section and they're in like a little tin Um, and they're like pull apart. I think they're yeast rolls. So I'm going to have to go rolls, pre-made rolls from the store in the frozen section, those specific ones. Um, I've never had baked homemade rolls ever, bake at home rolls, never had that. Um, I'm also less of a bread person the older I get. I don't really give a fuck if there's rolls or not. If there is, they're most likely going to be Hawaiian rolls. And again, I just don't care. So I'm going to go pre-made from the store and I may or may not even eat them. Perfect. Love that for us. Green bean casserole or Brussels sprouts. We actually never have either of those. Same. I've never had either at this at Thanksgiving. I prefer just like the regular traditional green beans. Traditional green beans. Um, I'm not a huge fan of casseroles in general. Growing up, my dad there was like two casseroles that we were allowed to have because my dad wasn't eating any other casserole. He said it's like you go into the fridge and casserole reminds him of either throw up or you've taken everything that you had all week out of the fridge, put it in a dish, and then tried to make a meal out of it. And like that wasn't his thing. So we don't really do that many casseroles in general. Um, never have I ever had green bean casserole. I've never had green bean casserole that I can think of, but it is something that sounds good to me. (laughs) I've never had Brussels sprouts at any of my um, holiday meals. Um, I like Brussels sprouts, especially from this pizza place called Luna's by me. They have the best um, Brussels sprouts with like a balsamic glaze and bacon and whatever. Mm, That slaps. I've never, I've also never had green bean casserole, but it's something that I would like to only like look up what's in that. But no, I would just do traditional green beans and I've never even had green beans at Thanksgiving. Okay. Cranberry sauce or corn? We have both at my family, uh, typically at my Thanksgivings. Like, well, growing up, I'm talking like my Nana died when I was in high school. So (laughs) it's been a long time since we've had, but like when I think of Thanksgiving, I think of when I went to my Nana's house as a kid. Um, We had both. Okay. So we always have cranberry sauce. I love cranberry sauce. Um, But I don't hate like canned cranberry sauce, like the kind that you like slice. I think that's super good to just like take a little bite of that, take a little bite of your dressing and then take a little bite of your fried turkey. That's so good. Never had corn at Thanksgiving. So really ever, ever. Yeah. Elijah was, he was like corn. Corn yeah, and also never. he he wants to do jerk chicken at our Oh see, I could be fine. I could get down with that. 
he he was like wanting to do all kinds of stuff. And I'm just, it's so fascinating to me, like different cultures, different people, South, North, like no matter what, like they're all so different. Oh, for I'm sure. actually going to text him and say, what are your like top five favorites at Thanksgiving? So over the years, I struggled with composting. I've never really been able to compost before, and it's always been kind of too much work for me in the midst of all the chaos. But I noticed how much food waste that we were throwing out, and I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to you know, take pride, and I want to do my part in the environment. So then I got a Lomi, and they allow me to turn my food scraps into dirt and literally press a button. So it's amazing, and now I can put it outside and not have the guilt. This is going to sound bad, but like I have never focused on recycling or composting, like anything like that. And you encouraged me to do so. And this is such an easy way. You're going to reduce how much garbage that you have, which I think is phenomenal. And you're going to start making a positive environmental impact. Um, or you can just make the cleanup after dinner so much easier. Lomi is going to be perfect for you. I'm so excited that I have it. You guys can head to lomi.com slash coffee combos and use the promo code coffee combos to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to lomi.com slash coffee combos and use promo code coffee combos at checkout. Food waste is gross. Lomi is your solution. With the holidays right around the corner, Lomi will make the perfect gift for someone on your shopping list. So inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, even if that means driving less, which for me... Maybe we have to take a season off of sports. I don't know. But whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store, we can all agree that there's nothing fun about less. Um, And that's why we kind of started using Upside. It's really nice. It's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out, which I do all three. Um, And with Upside, you don't have to cut back because you get cash back on every purchase. I am so thankful for Kristen for sharing this with us. She's the one who I found out about Upside from. um, And I have shared it with so many people. um, And they tell me every single time they use it. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. Um, If you guys have not tried Upside, you guys can get started. Download the free Upside app. Use our promo code COFFEECONVOS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Um, You can claim an offer from whatever you're buying on Upside. You check in at the business. You're going to pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or a loyalty program, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. And Upside users um, are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. You can download the free Upside app and use promo code COFFEECONVOS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code COFFEECONVOS. Okay, so we're going to get into some stuff that came through on the Facebook group from listeners, which I think is super fun. The first one is um, the first one says Thanksgiving 2020. My mom was irritated because she was the only one cooking, which led her to accidentally drink too many rum and cokes, fall asleep on the couch <laughs> before dinner was even done. We all ate a lukewarm, gravyless, momless meal and left her there. First of all, I'm going to roll right into this. Good for her. Nobody stopped her. <laughs> like, <laughs> poor thing. Good for her. Um, I know that there's lots of moms out there and grandmothers out there that are, you know, cooking for days and like really preparing and doing all of this. And I did Thanksgiving one time by myself when Will and I were mad at his parents for whatever reason. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own fucking feast. And I did. <laughs> And by the time I got done, I didn't even want it. I was like, this was so much work and I hope that you guys enjoy it, but like, I don't even care about it. So I definitely like feel this mom from the one time of my entire 33 years that I made Thanksgiving on my own. Um, Yeah. I, I love this for her and I don't hate this for her family. I just don't. That would really be upsetting to me. I don't cook, but if I did and then I fell asleep and everyone left me, I would be very upset. But also, 
again, bringing it back to my childhood Thanksgiving, there were designated person or people who were in charge of the food and nobody was expected to help cook outside of those people. (laughs) Um, I know my mom was always in charge of bringing the mashed potatoes. Like that was my mom's thing. Um, But I stayed out of the kitchen and I remember my cousin staying out of the kitchen too. Like that was not a thing. And like when we went to Dallas for Thanksgiving at Sterling's, She didn't want no help. She was like, don't come in my kitchen. Like she didn't want help. That's so funny, but I do. I'm wondering if it's a Southern thing though, because I feel like I might get chewed out about this. I feel like Northerners probably do more of like, you bring a dish, I bring a dish. We all put the dishes together and then like we have Thanksgiving. I think it's probably a, a customary thing in the South where one person cooks at their home and like you're not expected to bring a dish. And like, just don't bring a dish actually, because it might not be good. (laughs) It might not be good. um, Elijah said his top foods for Thanksgiving are mac and cheese, stuffing, greens, turkey, pie. I forgot about the greens. That's something that's new for me too. I never had greens at my Thanksgivings. See, we do greens for New Year's. Okay. So you don't do it, but you don't do it for Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Okay. Okay. Next person says every year we get together with my husband's family at a cold, dank, rundown fellowship building with no running water. Everyone arrives, eats, and leaves in 90 minutes. His aunt brings mac and cheese, but it's like mac and cheese soup. One year, someone brought PB&J sandwiches. This year, I said, let's do it at my house. I have heat and running water and a TV to watch football. Half the family declined to come. What? Okay. First of all, fellowship what is a fellowship building like a church yeah like that's what i'm imagining i'm imagining like a small like little church with like pop up chairs and like school lunch table style things is like what i'm picturing in my mind um to me if it's got to be like this i don't want to go cuz one i might be 90 minutes late so if everybody leaves in 90 minutes i might not even get there for the mac and cheese soup so first of all and like PB and J sandwiches, that's not even a thing. <laughs> Wait, I don't. I'm so confused. But every year we get together with my husband's family at a cold, dank, rundown fellowship building with no running water. Why? Why? What? There's no. There no. First of all, is that even legal for that many people? I I've just made up how many people are here, but I'm gonna imagine it's like a good amount of people. Is that even legal to be in a place like in a building with no running water with these people with PB and J sandwiches and macaroni and cheese soup? Like, I don't think so. I hate this idea. And I'm sad that half the family declined to come to your home, but I think you should stand your ground. And I think you should should stay at your home. And if they don't come, you don't have to be in a dank, rundown building with no running water. And you're also not eating PB and J sandwiches and macaroni and cheese soup. So that's my advice. I agree. I'm not going to no dank ass place on Thanksgiving. I'd rather just – for that, I would just stay home and eat the fucking PB&J. Okay. Next person says, one glorious Thanksgiving, my mom and aunt decided to try edibles. I have a story about this. Naturally, they made a rookie mistake of eating another after one 15 minutes because they're not doing anything. Fast forward two hours, my mom is full panic mode whether or not the local – whether or not the local duck she fed daily will starve overnight because there's no way she's in any fit state to go out and feed them. And my aunt is waking my uncle up every half hour and asking him to tell her whether or not she's still breathing. Wait, why? <laughs> First of all, I feel like this would be a common thing for somebody who tried edibles and then thought that they weren't working and then like took another one because it like didn't kick in yet. And then these things happened. Um, but you can't take them on a, on a holiday. Like someone gave not, me one on a holiday last holiday. Literally, and do I didn't not know. take these on a holiday. Like if you're gonna try edibles, holiday is not the time. It will literally put you on your ass and ruin your day. Someone that I know, I'm not gonna call them out because everybody knows them. <laughs> um, I feel like I know who it is. Gave me and other folks edibles mm-hmm. and didn't know. Mm-hmm. No, that person knew we didn't. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like, this is illegal. Like, oh, literally yeah, it is, illegal. And then I got a text message about it the other day. <laughs> they were like, you ready for them edibles again this year? Literally. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm not. I, I mean, we could get into 
semantics about about edibles and smoking weed, but like I can't function. I have in my life. Um, but if I was to eat an edible, like I'm on my, like I'm going to bed, like you won't see me for 10, 10 hours, um, smoking and edibles and things like that would put me on my ass and put me right to sleep. Like I can't, I'm not a functioning high person. Okay. Well, before we move on to the next thing, I needed to pull up my text messages from two days ago. That's how relevant that this is to me. (laughs) I had sent this person a picture of a fresh mojito with lots of mint and, just a a bowl of pickles. And they responded and said, I'm jealous. And I said, don't be, but do you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I remember when you ate that edible and was completely fried like some chicken, <laughs> like some turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I said, laughing my ass off might get into that at some point soon, to be honest, saying Period. way better than drinking. So this had happened to me on a holiday and um, I would say I feel bad for them, but I also don't. So next Next. Okay. Number four. Um, During a childhood Thanksgiving, my mom's candles caught the kitchen curtains and some decorative greenery on fire. My sister, my cousins, and I were just at the kids' table in the kitchen while the adults were were in the dining room. So no one of significance noticed anything except me. Before we started eating, my mom threatened us with the pain of death if we annoyed the adults during dinner. So when the fire got out of hand, I quietly walked into the dining room and stood silently for for a minute or two until someone noticed me. Only then did I po- <laughs> only then did I politely say, "Sorry, but the kitchen's on fire." My mom still gives me grief about my prioritizing politeness over sense. She did what she was told. This person's from the south. First of all, one hundred percent. She was not about to get whipped over that. No, she was not about to get whipped. Secondly, um, how many people have kids' tables at like their holiday functions? Because I grew up going to my mom's granny's for holidays, like all of our holiday meals um, before she, you know, passed away, and we always had freaking kids' table. I never had one because there was was no kids in my family. Like. I was jealous that I wasn't at the adult table because I always thought I was an adult my whole life and I hated being at the kids' table. And this person is also probably my twin because this is also how I would have handled the situation specifically. I'm trying to think. Like I was the youngest, so there was no need for a kid table. Now Sterling and I have to have a kid's table because I have four, she has two, and then my other girlfriend is coming with her four children. So they're going to have to – sit down and shut up at the kids' table. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Um, We're going to have a kids' table this year. Um, Kids' tables to me literally make me laugh so much because I'm like, what type of conversation is actually going on at the kids' table versus the adults' table? Well, Lux will probably get up on it and dance. So I'm thinking that your kids' table would be far more lit than your adult table. 100%. Okay, next. My, gram- my grandpa and my grandma got divorced, and my grandpa eventually remarried. One Thanksgiving during the what are you most thankful oh, for shit. portion of my dinner, my not-so-well grand- grandpa stood up and declared that he regretted letting my grandma divorce him and that it was the biggest mistake of his life right in front of his new wife. Wow, that's deep, and I have never done a what are you most thankful for part of the dinner. We never did that. Um, I wonder how that ended. I'm – gonna assume that he's probably divorced again (laughs) did he remarry though like i wonder how that went like i i want to know like how this played out so whoever told us about this please let us know because this is like drama that i'm invested in um (laughs) i think that i would love to have been a fly on the wall during this thanksgiving um and i wonder how often that it actually happens um I was told by someone in my life that most of the people that they know that have been divorced – actually, it's my nanny. She told me this. Most of the people (laughs) that have been divorced, um, they have a sense of regret from doing it once they've done it, like after many years have passed. And I wonder like what the psychology is behind that. I wonder if it's – if you can like still get along and be in like a normal – place where there's like not hostility and whatever is it you are maybe fantasizing over the what if if you would have stayed together or if you actually feel like you missed out on something and made a wrong mistake I think when I think about it it's more like 
it's kind of like when you're in a toxic relationship and you think about the reasons why you're staying in the toxic relationship is because you see the potential, you see who they are when they are a good person, when they, you know, on when things are up, when things are good. It's kind of like that. Like I know that I've reminisced about, you know, being married and I've almost romanticized the good parts and the good aspects. And it's like, did I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, I think that, I mean, I'm definitely not in that place. Um, Maybe it's just like too soon for me. Um, I don't think that I made a mistake, but I also definitely desire maybe in our future at some point, maybe like five years down the road that eventually like we could sit around a table with other significant others and like do this. I just hope that no one stands up and declares regretting getting divorced. Um, I would be mortified if that happened. Um, I just do think that it is probably, I think my nanny's right. And I think it is a common thing that people go through. When I was growing up at my Thanksgivings, nobody was divorced at all, except for my mom. And that, (laughs) I mean, my dad just didn't come to Thanksgiving. Um, he was out of the picture. Um, when my Nana died and people started getting divorced, me, one of my cousins and my aunt got divorced at the same time. Um, Thanksgiving was never the same after that. We never really got fully together again. I mean, some of us would get together at my aunt's house. Um, but I really feel like divorce, like kind of at my na- my Nana's death really pulled us all apart. Well, I hate that. Um, I feel like everybody in my family has been divorced, so I can't relate. Um, I come from divorced folk, so. Yeah. It's the holiday season, and from curling and straightening to hairspray and over bleaching, we've all done some damage to our hair over the years, and it's probably not going to lighten up anytime soon because we've got all kinds of holiday parties, work events, you know, you name it, school events for our kids. So if you're like me and you struggle to have longer and thicker hair after the damage that we've done to it, Vegamore can help transform your hair. So they have a holistic approach to hair health using smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair. I absolutely love Vegamore. I have been using them for some time now and I love them so much. I think this would be such a great gift for either yourself um, or for somebody that you love, maybe a great stocking stuffer. Um, With the help from Vegamore, you can get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals, which is super important to me. As you guys know, I've talked about this before. I've tried to clean out as many products as I possibly can to just have cleaner products. And all of Vegamore products are cruelty free. They never contain parabens or hormones. And if you are just looking to improve your hair health, their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker um, hair and improves hair from the roots. You just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with a conditioner. It is so simple. And having Vegamore as my go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer. And what I love about it also is that when I tried it, there was no risk because they have a 90 day money back guarantee. Um, but with 91% of their customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you guys won't want to run out. Don't let the damage of the past hold your hair back. See your hair's full potential with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash coffee combos and use coffee combos to save 20% on your first order. That's V E G A M O U R.com slash coffee combos code coffee combos to save 20% at vegamore.com slash coffee combos. Okay, we're going to do one more and then we're going to do some vowel play. Okay, go ahead. Do you want me to read it or are you reading it? You go ahead. Hello, fluffers. I wanted to share my story of what not to do while prepping for Thanksgiving. Years ago, when my kids were younger, they were sitting around the kitchen table while I made up pumpkin pies. I can, t- I can always tell if I had the spices right by smelling and tasting the batter. As I proceeded to put my nose closer to the bowl and sniff it, I stupid stupidly forgot the fucking mixer was still going. (laughs) Needless to say, those beaters rolled up (gasps) my hair faster than any curling iron I've ever used and slammed into the side of my head. I felt like every hair was being ripped out. The three boys, all early teen assholes, laughed so hard they were in tears. I was in tears also, but not from laughing. 
I made them all leave the room and managed to somehow save my hair from the mixer. So remember, kitty gang, turn off the mixer before doing a sniff test. FYI, I made a new batch. Pies came out perfect. But to this day, that story gets told every single Thanksgiving. Thanks for letting me share my stupidity. That's like my vacuum story when I got my va- my hair caught in the freaking thing. I still don't see how that happened, honestly. <laughs> That poor girl. Oh, my God. Her hair was probably going to rip out. First of all, every single person that is listening to this, if you lie and say that you don't do taste tests by tasting batter of everything on Thanksgiving, you're a liar. I just remember eating. We had um, a vegetable tray that every year at my Nana's, and that was like the appetizer for – my mom wouldn't let me eat all day. Like – there was one thing my mom was going to show up for, and it was Thanksgiving with the mashed potatoes. She might not have fed me for the rest of the year, but that was what she was going to show up. Susie, she brought, she came committed with those potatoes. She, she was committed to holidays when I was a kid. So if she was going to look like the perfect mom to anybody, it was going to be Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, but on Thanksgiving, I was not allowed to eat anything until we got to my Nana's because at some point we eventually moved away. It was like two or three, two or three hour drive every year. Um and, but there was always a veggie tray and I used to eat all the carrots and the olives out of the veggie tray. That was like our appetizer. Um, I was, like I said, I wasn't allowed in the kitchen, so I couldn't try any batters. I couldn't try the, like, I couldn't try anything. Oh gosh. See, like people from the South, you're going to try it and you're going to tell what you think's missing. Like your mom's going to give you a spoon or your nanny's going to give you a spoon and be like, does this taste right? Like, do you feel like it needs more sage or like, do you feel like this is good. Like, I feel like that's just like a very common thing, but I also think it's a very common thing that you're not allowed to eat all day. And it's like, who told you that? Well, because we would eat my Nana's Thanksgiving started at one o'clock. Oh, okay. That's a good question to ask everybody. What time does your Thanksgiving start? Because we would eat at one. I think some people do like evening and then some people do lunchtime and then some people do like brunch hours. We always did We ate at one o'clock and then we would go out and play with the football. We would play football and then um, we'd come back in and have dessert. We eat when my mom and nanny say that the meal's on the table. That's what time we eat at. The meal's – oh, so y'all – oh, okay. Okay. So like we're all there at like 12, one o'clock, whatever, but – Was it mandatory for you guys growing up? Like when I was growing up, I'm – shit you not, like – when I think of Thanksgiving today or holidays today and like people I know that have siblings and so-and-so and and where are you going for Thanksgiving and they don't have like, like I'm so stuck on my childhood. Um, Nobody, as long as my Nana was alive, nobody missed Thanksgiving or Christmas. Like it was not, oh, I'm going somewhere else for Thanksgiving. Like that wasn't a thing. That was literally my mom's granny. And like, it was just like a known time. Like you're showing up and like dinner's going to be on the table at one o'clock. Period. And Period. You're, you're you're not going to so and so's house instead. Like whatever you do after you leave Nana's house is on you. But you show up and you're not you're not going somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like you're It would be so rude or would probably be no one said this, but like in my mind, it probably would have been offensive if you would have like been late to that because you knew the meal was going on the table at one o'clock, like no questions. Um we're a little bit more flex with my parents because my parents now host everything. Um, and it's just kind of like whatever time the macaroni and cheese is done bubbling is like what time you're going to eat. <laughs> it's all – mac and cheese is key. Okay. We actually do have time to do number seven if you want to read it. Okay. Love the pod. I tell almost everybody that I know they have to listen. This is a story of what – of when I almost died first of all. I almost died at family Thanksgiving and nobody noticed. When I was in the eighth grade, I got braces a week before Thanksgiving. In hindsight, who was the asshole that decided that? Facts. My mouth was so sore on the best food day of the year, but I digress. I had an expander across the roof of my mouth I was getting the hang of along with the braces. My family is 100% toxic and used to force holidays together. And this particular year, everybody was in particularly bad moods. I was just starting to enjoy my salad when the bickering began amongst the table. I was minding my own business, chowing down when a large, fancy piece of lettuce got hung up in the roof of my mouth under the expander and lodged in my throat. I experienced true choking. I was silent. I couldn't cough, talk, or so much grunt loud enough 
for anybody to hear me over the fighting. So here I am at the end of the table, fighting for my life, shoving my finger in my throat, trying to pull the lettuce out of what my family fought, pulling the lettuce out while my family fought over some bullshit and nobody was noticing. I was panicked and I finally punched my stepbrother in the arm. He performed his version of the Heimlich on me to dislodge it. It was one of the most scariest moments of my life. And all I could think of was I was going to die in the presence of my whole family and nobody is going to notice. Thankfully, the chaos has ended and everybody has now decided to do their own thing for the holidays and no more near death experiences have occurred. Um, choking is something that I am absolutely terrified of. Um, especially with children. One mm. time my sister got a spaghetti noodle lodged in her throat and I saved her life. So Savannah Chrisley, if you're listening, um, you're welcome for being here. And <laughs> I everyone. also, I choked on a hot dog at daycare one time and almost died and another kid like saved me or whatever. Um, I have a couple things to say about this. Number one, I'm so glad that you're okay. Um, I also had a near death experience with lettuce from Salad Works where I was driving what? and eating my salad and I like inhaled um, a piece of spinach and it was like th- exactly how she described like and I was driving so I shouldn't have been eating the salad but I couldn't breathe couldn't talk couldn't cry couldn't um, cough nothing and it was just like I like <gasps> it's, it's, so it's like I literally inhaled it but. Next thing I want to say is we never had salad at our Thanksgivings. Yeah, I don't think we've ever had salad at our Thanksgiving either. Um, but I also don't want to not address the fact of like the toxic family. Also, we've never had a fight at our at our family functions ever. I wonder how many fights happen at family functions. I feel like it's a lot actually. My family is I don't know like my family is very like secretive about like certain things. Like there's just certain things that we don't talk about, but I have never experienced my family fighting ever. Interesting. None of them. Nobody. I have, if there was ever an argument between people in my family, I have never known about it. Okay. Well, um, I cannot relate because if there is ever anything going on in my family, everybody knows about it. You're going to know about it. You're going to be annoyed about it because Another person has to be annoyed about it. Um, and you're going to do the walk of shame probably if you've done something that is just like foul. So interesting. Speaking family, of foul. I've never seen them fight. That's so crazy. Okay. Speaking of foul. We're going to do foul play. I'm scared. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. From our dear Alexa in the Facebook group. I don't know if this pod- this is podcast worthy, my dear Kristen Noel Hook, but one year we went to Thanksgiving at my aunt and uncle's house and I was pumped for the deviled eggs. Okay. Again, I never had deviled eggs at my Thanksgiving either. So that's a shame. I don't know why, but I was like pumped. Well, I bite into one at mealtime and find an animal hair and then another and then another. Oh. One of my aunt's animals got into the deviled eggs, filling every single deviled egg filling with animal hair. And I didn't eat eggs for years. I'm immediately disgusted and this is why I have a problem with eating people's food that I don't know because all my family never like <laughs> this is again like I feel like my family is an anomaly an, an anomaly. Um growing up my family wasn't animal people. Like they were but they they didn't have like a ton of animals. Um nobody had cats. Everyone only had dogs that stayed on the floor so they never we just never had a hair issue. That is so fucking foul and I won't eat like potlucks at people's like works or like events and stuff because you don't know. Like I don't know like how their utensils were clean that made that. I don't know how that stuff was stored, like what the inside of their refrigerator looks like if it's like so disgusting. Um, You just don't know and we grew up like that. Like my dad was so about that. Like you don't eat other people's food. Like you don't this, you don't that. And that's specifically why you, if you are invited to my family's Thanksgiving or Christmas, like don't bring food because no one's going to eat it. Oh, so disgusting. And I am terrified like of eating. If I ate something from someone else's house and found an animal here, like, oh my God. No, that's so foul. That is so foul. And I'm, I'm very jealous, of, but I am jealous of the deviled eggs. That would make me upset because I never- I, is also I a staple them. of Thanksgiving kill. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell Elijah and Sterling right now. Um, Okay. We refer to this as the Thanksgiving from hell. Oh, shit. Bless. 
I was sleeping on the floor. House was full of relatives, you know, and I woke up my aunt screaming bloody murder from the bathroom. She was taking a shower and the plumbing backed up through the tub. It was quite literally shitty water. We had to shut the water off and finish the cooking at several different neighbors' houses. Okay, yeah, this is hell. That's literal hell. (laughs) To make matters worse, we couldn't reach a plumber until the following Monday. My uncle was staying at a hotel and wouldn't let a single one of us use his room or use the bathroom to shower. We had to take carloads of family members to literal gas station to use the bathroom. So I went back to college all gross from the days of no showering. Turns out the plumbing issue was a citywide problem. They had to evacuate the entire street in front of our house. So the whole ordeal was expensive, messy, and left such a scar on my family that none of my relatives have been invited back since. We have a small, immediate family, only Thanksgiving now, and they are so much better. Um, I do not know any of my neighbors outside of Elijah's cousins well enough to ever ask them if I could cook something at their <laughs> their house. Um, I feel like at this point, unless you're in this situation, I don't know like what you would do. But I think that if I had to like go to different neighbors' houses to use the stove, I would just like call it a day and order Domino's. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna call Boston Market. Yeah, like not yeah no i'm not going to multiple neighbors houses to try to to use their stove um but good for you guys for really thugging it out and like doing the most because this Mm -hmm. is this is great um also the uncle who wouldn't let you use his room or bathroom to shower and shit we are pissed off at him still (laughs) and also um a small immediate family only thanksgiving is definitely um, preferred for me. I love that. I loved my growing up, my extended family. That was the only time I really saw them. So I loved it. But now I just float around for Thanksgiving or don't celebrate. It depends. Um, are we doing another one? Yep. Last one. Okay. Kind of dramatic, but it has a happy ending. Don't worry. Last year we did Thanksgiving business as usual at my husband's family's house. We had just gotten a new golden retriever puppy about two weeks before. We brought both of our dogs over, and after lunch, I decided to give them a little treat and use turkey as a mechanism for training. What can go wrong, right? Fast forward half hour where she's literally having uncomfortable (sighs) diarrhea on the carpet, vomiting, etc. We cut our visit short and went home to realize she refused to drink any water, so we rushed her to the closest animal hospital. After tons of tests, x-rays, etc., she was pumped full of fluids and feeling much better. We still to this day have not given her any turkey and are 100% not sure if it was the turkey that did that. Think Thanksgiving with many family members who saw a cute puppy and might have given her extra scraps without us knowing. Needless to say, she's all right now. She's kept us on our toes since since, and we think the incident might have scented her growth since she's only about 45 pounds. Vets have checked her out and she's healthy, just tiny. Oh, wow. Yeah, she. but there maybe there was like a little bone in it. I don't know. Okay. No. This so who knows? This did not happen to me on Thanksgiving. This this is not something that happened to me on Thanksgiving, but it's something that happened to me in college. Um, anybody who's ever watched Chris Lee Knows Best and you see Miley, which is now my nanny's dog, she actually was originally purchased for Grayson. Then I got her and had her through college. And then when my papa passed away, um, I was pregnant with Jackson and was living with nanny and so she just kept Miley Mm -hmm. but when I was in college I would make like pot roast I was a much better cook in college than I am now so you guys try to figure it out I don't know um we had made a pot roast and fixed her bowl of dog food and put like a little pot roast and like a little bit of like the juice on top Mm -hmm. Kale when I tell you that dog was so deathly ill I thought that she was gonna die I was a broke college student so I didn't know like how much it was gonna cost for me to like go and get her help. But I had to go and get her help because I was like, if one, she's not eating, she's lethargic, like something's got to give. I take her and she comes pretty much back alive after like a week, but it was like something in that meat. I wonder what, maybe the spices, the juice. I don't know. That's I have so, I've no never idea. heard of that. But like I would advise any person. Um, Georgia also has a very uh, sensitive belly and so I've got to be careful about what she gets. And um, if you do have dogs around Thanksgiving table and you're bringing them around people that you don't know, I would either advise you not to bring your dog or to tell everyone not to feed them table scraps because this kind of shit does happen. 
Um, also, many people don't know this, but a lot of dogs are very sensitive to chicken. I'm not sure about turkey, but um, if anyone like feeds them turkey flavored food or food that has turkey, uh, not turkey, um, chicken flavored food, food with chicken, chicken scraps, things like that, it's actually like one of their biggest allergies. You know, it's so funny because I talked about um, Georgia and some shit problems on Southern Tea with Kristen. And there was like this whole thread on the Facebook group. And I didn't know, like I thought chicken was like a cus- like a normal thing that like you give to dogs. So yeah, I had, me too. I thought it was normal. I had no idea. But I do think that she has a, um allergy to chicken. Yeah. A lot of dogs do. And I'm, people had no idea. Kristen was the one that told me. And then the vet told me after Kristen told me. Unreal. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that every single person that is listening to this, that you involved us on your special day, on preparations for Thanksgiving. Listen to our bullshit. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I hope that you guys enjoy your time with your families. Um, And I hope that you guys have amazing food. I hope nobody experiences a fire from frying turkeys. (laughs) And I hope I also get to enjoy Thanksgiving. Kale, I hope that you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving, Thank that you, you enjoy the time with your out-of-town guests, um, and that you feel like a stuffed turkey at the end of the day and have a wonderful nap and wake up energized <laughs> and happy as can be. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. If you don't celebrate, I hope you guys have a great day, whatever you do choose to do. I hope Jackson has a great day day with you, whether you're doing sides or Thanksgiving or not, whatever you guys are deciding to do. And thank you, Kristen, for helping us put this episode together. Thank you, Alexa, for contributing your foul play, which I'm absolutely disgusted by. Um, And we will talk to you guys next week. See ya.